Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, and this is How to Make a First Person Shooter in Unity, and welcome to episode 25. So this time we're going to specifically look at something called tags and how they affect different game objects. And in doing that, what we're going to end up doing is creating uh, some blood for when we shoot our enemy. So if we go over to our enemy firstly, so if we double click our zombie enemy, and you'll notice over here at the top in the inspector panel we have tag untagged. Now, tags are very useful to determine, for example, when we use our raycast to see what we're actually hitting. Because at the moment, when we shoot our gun, no matter what we hit, we end up creating that bullet hole that we created a couple of tutorials ago. <clears throat> so obviously, we don't want that to happen when we hit our enemy. We want blood to spurt out. So the way we're going to do that is firstly create a tag to attach to enemies. So if we go to tag up here, it says untagged, go down to add tag, and you should see list is empty. If not, it doesn't matter, but you just need to click on this plus right there. So what we're going to do is name our tag, and I'm just going to call it zombie, and then click on save. And we should see tag zero, zombie, or if you've got more tags, you would have tag, whatever number it is, and zombie. So then what we have to do is go back to our zombie enemy, click tag, untagged again, and click on zombie. So this essentially means that this is now different from anything that's untagged. We'll deal with tags a little bit more later on throughout the series anyway, when we get a bit more advanced in what we're doing. But for now, this is just the simplest way of doing it. So what we need to do is let's create a particle system for our blood spurt. So when we shoot, we want blood to kind of spurt out a little bit. Best way to do this, particle system, so game object. And let's go to effects and let's go to particle system. Now, we've touched on particle systems before previously. Um, I think we did it for our uh, muzzle flash, didn't we? But this one's going to be a little bit different. So at the moment, if we go on bullet hole, we can hold control and press D to duplicate that. And I'm going to F2 and rename it blood particle. And then I'm going to drag and drop this particle system onto that blood particle and then I'm going to zero out the position. So if we go to blood particle here, we can see that this particle system is pretty big. So what I might do is uncouple it first. And I'd say that should, uh, that should probably do, to be honest. So yeah, we can keep it on blood particle. And this plane here represents the bullet hole, so we can get rid of that bullet hole. We don't need it. This is just purely for the blood. So, uh, you, oh, I've just noticed, yeah. The reason you might still see a bullet hole there is because this object is in the exact same place as the bullet hole. So I'm just going to move this away just for now. Okay, so let's deal with this particle system and get it making a little bit more like blood rather than some crazy what looks like flashing white lights. So the duration of this is going to be fairly small because it's just a spurt of blood. It's not going to drag on for six seconds or whatever. So let's have this as 0.1. That's going to be our duration. We don't want it looping either. We want it to only occur once. There's going to be no start delay because we don't really need it. Start lifetime, let's say half a second. So 0.5. And start speed, I think, is going to be relatively short. So let's let's try all this first and try 0 0.3. So a couple of settings we don't need to worry about. Start size is going to be very low. So let's have this as probably 0 0.05 because we don't need it too big. But we can always modify these things later on. Uh, we don't need any of these here, but the color we do need to be red. So let's select a nice deep red. That looks just fine. Uh, gravity modifier, don't need it just yet, but we can kind of make it drip down a little bit if we need to, but we can do that later. It's worth playing around with these after the tutorial anyway. All of these other settings don't need to worry about for now. Emission, let's change it from 10 to 100 because we want quite a bit more than just 10 particles appearing. Uh, rate over distance, we don't need to play around with that. That'll do just a zero. So we can tick, uh, sorry, click a mission again just to close that upwards. Shape. Now this one is quite important. The shape of the actual blood splatter itself is very important. So we're going to keep it as cone, but we're going to change the angle to something higher. Let's try 
60. Let's have an angle of 60 so it spurts outwards. But we're going to have the radius as absolute minimal. So we need this as 0 0.01. Uh, radius thickness, yeah, all, I think all these settings will do, at least for the basics of creating some blood. And we're going to need size over lifetime. So we're going to start and tick size over lifetime. Click on this uh, option down here to produce this red line and we want to start it up here. And we want to finish it down here. So the idea of what we've done here is we start big and dissipate into nothing over its lifetime. So hopefully, if we zoom into our particle system, we go on here, we should be able to see when we click on our particle system, you can see that blood splatter there. So let's try that one more time. So we click on there, click on that. You can see that's the kind of effect it's gonna have when we shoot our weapon at least when we hit the zombie, I should say. So I'm going to move the particle system up a little bit inside the blood particle cube, because it's in the middle, but I want it to be a bit further upwards. I'll explain a little bit more of how you can modify this to make it look a little bit more blood-like um, when we um, actually apply it to the zombie, because there's different things you can do to it. Like in the same way we had the muzzle flash, we applied a texture to it. You could apply a blood texture to this particle system to make it look a bit better. So what we'll do now is we'll find our zombie and we need to use that tag system in its script to determine whether this is going to be a zombie or whether this is going to be uh, a bullet hole or blood or bullet hole, I should say. So let's go back to our zombie. And what we need to do is we need to go into the handgun damage script, which is somewhere here. I did see it a second ago. There we are. So if we go into our damage script and within here, we're going to need to create another variable. And uh, this one, I have already gone ahead and put the variable called the blood in here, just to kind of speed things along a bit. But I say there's nothing to drastic that I've done here. It's just a simple variable. So the idea is we've got the possibility of a bullet variable and the blood variable. So you're always going to be able to do one or the other. So what's going to happen is here where we have if physics.raycast transform vector three. Yeah, 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 yeah. Within this section, what we now need to do is create, <clears throat> excuse me, another if statement. And this if statement is going to reference that tag. So if, and in brackets, hit dot transform, and this is all lowercase at the moment, dot tag equals, that's a double equals, and then quotes, whatever we name the tag as. So we've tagged our zombie as zombie. So that needs to be the name of the tag at this point. So we put zombie in those quotes. Uh, open curly bracket. And what we need to do, is do pretty much what we've done here except for the blood instead of the bullet. So instantiate and in brackets the blood and comma and it's hit dot point. So obviously we, we did all this before we referred what the hit point is, the uh, point of where it hits exactly. Uh, quaternion dot from to rotation and in brackets vector three dot up comma hit dot normal and then close the brackets to close that instantiate and then semicolon and then after that we can close curly bracket and let's just indent that so we can see what's going on and underneath that we also need the else statement because if it isn't the zombie then we need to do what we've normally done, which is instantiate the bullet. So create the bullet hole and then close that curly bracket there. So now just double check and go down your list and just make sure that everything here is closed properly. So then this final one should close the update, which it does just fine. So I'm going to save that script there. And um, Trying to think where we put the uh, script for it. It's on FPS controller, I think. Is it the enemy trigger? 
I do believe it is here and it's good mechanics it is. So what should happen now is we drag and drop the blood particle onto the blood and let's give this a go. So fingers crossed. Oh god, I pulled myself all the way over here. I'm going to quickly take my first person controller and just bring it a little bit closer, not to waste any time. So let's bring it to about there. So let's pick up ammo. Let's pick up our gun. So let's just check. You can still make bullet holes. Perfect. And now let's give this blood a go. There we go. So we can see the blood is created at the point of where you would normally expect the bullet to appear. So going back to this blood particle system, there are different ways of actually working around this. You could, for example, let's just take a minute to play around with some of these settings. You could make the start lifetime a second to make it last a bit longer. So if we click it, you can see it goes on a little bit longer. You could change the start size to 0 0.2 again to make it bigger. But considering it's blood particles, it probably wouldn't be a good idea to have it that big. It may look a little bit silly. Um, you can also change the color, obviously. We'll probably do that in next episode anyway, because I've got some cool stuff planned next episode. And obviously, the size of a lifetime, you can change the generic size of it. You could have it just dissipate completely. The shape of it is also important. And as I said before, you could also apply texture to it. So if you go into Google and perhaps search up a blood texture, and as I say, much in the same way we did with the uh, muzzle flash, you can apply it to this particle system to give the blood a little bit more of a blood type effect. So I'm just going to give this one more go, just to make sure that it wasn't a fluke and everything is working just fine. Still shoot bullets, perfect. Now let's give a headshot to our zombie. There we go. So guys, that is how you can add blood. and It's real simple. As I say, work with your particle system, change things. Don't be afraid to play around and see what you do. You can always undo everything, you know, hold control, press Z, undo everything like that. So play around with it and see what you come up with. So next episode, we're going to add in another enemy type. We'll look at a different blood style uh, for it and we'll add a cutscene to the beginning of the game. So as I say, things are all coming together. And I think adding another enemy is going to be a lot of fun to this because it gives a bit more diversity to what we're building here. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.